So, uh, as you know, uh, yesterday the FBI raided uh, Donald Trump's home in mar a I can't pronounce it, in Florida. And um, while uh, Trump was in New York, uh, they, uh, I guess, went through all the stuff, opened up a safe, and took a bunch of documents uh, from the home. Not clear what those documents are. Not, not clear what it is exactly they were looking for, what it is exactly they found. Um, the best hypothesis out there is that uh, this is part of um, an ongoing investigation and search of documents that Trump took after he left the White, left the White House and took with him home, uh, documents that were supposed to be handed over to the presidential archive, some of them potentially top secret, although again, nobody really knows, uh, and uh, a variety of other things. So the, 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 I guess the law is, and this is codified in law, is that when a president leaves the White House, they're supposed to hand over everything, all written documentation, all their records, any tapes they made, any, um, any notes they took, any letters they got, uh, anything like that that relates uh, uh, even tangentially to government business is not theirs, but is the state's, and they need to hand it over to the National Archive or whatever. Um, Trump, it seems, clearly did not do this, um, and uh, it, it, it seems that uh, he took a bunch of stuff uh, with him home. Um, the the uh, Justice Department has met already with Trump in the past. He has handed over, I guess, boxes of documents that he took home uh, and they've been returned. And the, 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 the guessing is that there were still some documents that he had not handed over that they believed were in his home in Florida and uh, that the raid was, the intention of the raid was to get at those documents and to return them and potentially uh, build a case uh, against Trump as having violated this specific uh, law. I don't know if that's why they were there. I don't know if that's what they were looking for. I don't know if they found anything or didn't find anything. It's hard to tell what motivated them. There's no news coming out from, um, uh, from the, uh, the Justice Department or the FBI about what this is all about and what uh, they found and what motivated them and what's the investigation or anything else. The idea that uh, Trump broke the law or the idea that Trump does and is doing and has done shady things right, certainly does not come as a shock to anybody. But this is the problem. Uh, the problem is that Americans have completely lost trust in their institutions. And in particular, given the, the performance of uh, the FBI, uh, during the Trump administration and all the scandals and all the, the bias and FBI agents saying what they said on record, you know, uh, uh, going after Trump, uh, the FBI has lost any credibility. Now, the, the Justice Department, uh, you know, is, is a political entity. We know that. I mean, the only credible thing the Justice Department has done in the last six years is... Uh, is uh, tell Trump that he lost the election <laughs> and not buy into the conspiracy theories. So, um, you know, the Justice Department is clearly politicized, has been politicized, is likely to be politicized. And it's very difficult to tell in the world in which we live whether this raid is just is justified under the idea of um, everybody everybody's equal before the law and uh, if Trump broke the law then and there was a warrant issued then so be it then he, his place is searched just like if there was you know if, if the FBI if they just upon me thought I broke the law, they wouldn't hesitate for one second to come here with a warrant and search my place. Why is Trump special? And, and my first instinct is, yeah, e equality before the law means whether you're a candidate for the president, whether you're a former president, whether you're a future president, doesn't matter. If you broke the law, if you break the law, 
you, you investigate it, and part of that investigation could involve searching your home. What's the big deal? The problem is that we live in an environment, we live at a time where everything is being politicized. And whether this particular investigation is politicized or not makes no difference. It's perceived as being political. It's taken as being political. I mean, maybe if the Justice Department comes out with real evidence and they can show it and they can, maybe that'll convince people that it wasn't political. But really, it's going to take a lot. And the silence on the part of the Justice Department, even though the appropriate procedure after a search like this, silence, given the political environment, it makes this a lot worse. And I understand why they're silent, but it's a problem. So, uh, I, I can understand why, under the right circumstances, it needed to be done. If he broke the law, and they really believe he broke the law, and it's serious, and, and they, 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 they've tried by every other means to get what they need to get, and they couldn't. And, uh, but nobody's going to believe them, no matter what they say. Well, nobody is a big, but half of America, half of America is not going to believe them. And the thing that really worries me about this, the thing that really uh, troubles me around this, and, and I don't think, uh, is the fact that this is the one thing that could be the tipping point not only, certainly for Trump to run and to win the Republican nomination, because now he can claim to be a victim, and he loves playing the victim. He can play the victim, and he can say that he's been victimized by the left because he's the only one who will stand up to the left, and Republicans must vote, must vote for him because he is the only one who can stand up for the left. And look. They even came after him with the Justice Department. Look, they even raided his house. So, it's, um, this is gonna, this is gonna encourage Trump to run. It might even, because it will become so popular among Republicans, it might even discourage people like DeSantis and others from running against him. Because I think if he was a favorite already, now he'll become an even bigger favorite because he's got this, this you know, persecution thing going on. He'll, he's got now... this victimhood going on. So, um, I don't know, it, it's very depressing. Uh, I, I look at my Twitter feed, I look at, uh, at Facebook, I look everywhere and what I see are people saying things like, you know, I'm no Trump fan, I don't like Trump, but this, this is completely political. They don't know the facts, they, they don't know what's going on, but they've already decided it's political. They've made up their mind. And now they're basically much more favorably inclined towards Trump than they were before. So it's almost like Trump has a, um, a mole in the Justice Department that got them to do this so he could benefit from it. Because this is a huge benefit to him. Now again, the only caveat to that is if they found something meaningful, they found something really, you know, damning of Trump, and they can show it and prove it, then maybe it changes. And think about it, that unfortunately for Trump, the last few months, certainly the last few weeks, have been kind of a negative. Uh, he clearly lost a lot of people over the January 6th revelations, uh, over what the committee came through, or some of the testimony. Uh, he was uh, clearly 
slowly losing support among Republicans. And uh, polls were showing that DeSantis was rising while Trump was, was weakening, although he was, still, he was still winning. He was definitely weakening, and, and others within the Republican Party were strengthening. This will reverse all that. This gives him the perfect platform. Indeed, today, less than 24 hours after the raid happened on his home, Trump came out with a fundraising letter urging people to support him so he could stand up to the Justice Department, the FBI, and all the evil swamp that is trying to uh, attack him and destroy him and, and, and so on. So whether it's true or not, whatever the motivations of the Justice Department happen to be, it doesn't matter. Trump wins. Trump wins. And I don't know if he can win a general election or lose a general election. It's so hard to tell, um, given how unpopular Biden is and, and given the unlikelihood that the Democrats can come up with anybody who's any good, never mind popular. I, you know, I don't know if Trump would lose. I mean, the hope was the Republicans would choose somebody else, somebody better, and take advantage of the fact that Biden or whatever Democrat ran was very weak, given the economy is probably going to be weak, and therefore a Republican candidate could win. But the last Republican candidate on planet Earth that I want to win is Trump, and I fear that this has uh, made that all the more likely. And, and politics, politics, everything changes so fast, so quickly. Um, that, you know, you, 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 you can't know. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what the Justice Department actually comes out with. Actually comes out with. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.